ಸಹನಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾವಿದ್ವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಮೇ ದ ಲೋಡ್ ಪ್ರೊಟೆಕ್ಟಸ್ ಮೇ ಹಿ ನರಿಷಸ್ may we acquire the capacity to study and understand the scriptures may our study be brilliant and may we not cavil at each other om peace 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 and us all dear brothers and sisters loving sai ram to all of you we welcome all of you for the online satsang of the Sri Sat Sai Baba Center of Arcadia. So today we are continuing the study circle on Sutra Vahini. As I said, this is the commentary written by Swami on Brahma Sutras. This is one of the three scriptural texts with the Prasthana Trayam along with Bhagavad Gita. Upanishads and third one is Brahma Sutras which are written by Badarayana and there are many bhashyas, commentaries and it is wonderful to see the commentary from the avatar himself. So we... Next, the core of the individual is Atma or Brahman. The human body is first of all a cover, a receptacle, alambana for the Atma. Elements like water and wind are intimately bound up with the body. Therefore, the Atma principle, the Brahman principle, which is the core, is not cognized. People have lost awareness of this principle, Tattva, which is their truth. The Atma is in the body, but not of it. The Atma principle, though active in the body, does not belong to the body. The capacity of the eyes to see and the ears to hear are given by the Atma. How then can the eyes see the Atma or the ears hear it. The eyes and ears are sustained, are there. The omni-consciousness, Sarva Chaitanya, the Brahman principle, the Atma, is the sustainer. That is the real you, the will, Sankalpa. So in here, Swami is making it very clear, very succinctly, that we are not the body. And this is, he beautifully addresses us as Prema Sarupa Lara, Divatma Sarupalara, which is again reminding us that we are the embodiment, we are the embodiment of the Atma, embodiment of Prema, of love. We are not the body. So mistakenly, people think that uh, we are the body and therefore we care for the body and care for all the attachments to the body. But seekers, spiritual seekers, really seek the Atma, the truth. And that is the real core of all beings, not just human beings, of all beings. And when we realize that that Atma is part of Brahman, it is the same principle as the Brahman, then that is self-realization, or then everything else becomes secondary. In the second paragraph here, Swami is pointing out that how can we use our senses to go to the source? Because the other way around, the source is what keeps the senses and keeps everything. This Panchabhutas, the five uh, five elements that make the body, the Panchapranas, the five vital airs that make the body, the Panchaindriyas, the five senses, and the Panchaganindriyas, all of these are part of the body. But the real principle is the Atma, which is the 21st. That's why we do the 21 ohms to go to the real principle, which is the Atma, which is the sustainer. 
So again, this is being pointed out here very clearly that our core is actually the Atma, not, not just the body awareness. And this is very hard for us to grasp and really practice ultimately. Sairam. Sairam, why don't you continue that? So we'll finish it up and then I'll comment okay. for both of them because it's almost, uh, okay. we want to finish this sutra. So yeah. the next one, read that and then I'll come uh, make comment for both. Okay. Next one is all is the ever conscious Brahman. The elements, space, wind, fire, water and earth that constitutes a cosmos operate only as prompted by the supreme wisdom, Prajnana. The gods, devas, or the shining ones are luminous only through that wisdom which energizes them. The entire world of living being is sustained by that supreme wisdom, the fixed and the moving. Stara and the Jangama are both firmly based on supreme wisdom. The supreme wisdom is Atma, the supreme wisdom is Brahman. It is also the visible objective world, Loka. The cosmos is supreme wisdom through and through. The supreme wisdom is the consciousness, Chaitanya, that fills the cosmos, Prapancha. The Vedas assert that Brahman is the cause of the cosmos by using the word being, Sat, to denote it. Being is the, quote, ever conscious is, unquote. The Vedas do not speak of anything that is not conscious, achetana. All is consciousness, chetana, that is, all is Brahman. So in this last section also, it's a summary of this whole sutra that this entire world is sustained by Brahman. And this is one of the Mahavakyas of the Vedas, Prajnanam Brahma. Prajnanam Brahma is that Brahman is pure consciousness. And that consciousness is for everything, not, not just yeah. us human beings or animals or things. Like Dr. Eddie just said, every object in the universe, everything, everything that is even beyond the senses is pervaded by this consciousness. And the Vedas assert that Brahman is Satchit Ananda, Sat being that principle which is being, it is just is. Like Swami has said very nicely, God is, so Brahman is. The Chit refers to the Chetana, or the consciousness, and then Ananda is the state of all, all things in, the, in all the worlds here. And he's pointing out again that the gods, the human beings, the demigods, the objective objects, all are luminous through that wisdom. You take away Brahman, everything vanishes. And he's the source, the sustenance, and the final goal of everything in the universe. So this is the principle of the ever-conscious Brahman, Saira. And so the bottom line we all need to remember is, all is Brahman, just Sarvam Kalvidam Brahma. It is just like principle. And all is consciousness, Chetana. So what is Brahman? Brahman is, so these are all interchangeable. People get confused. Brahman is consciousness, Chetana. And, and Brahman is love. And Brahman is Atma. There is everything, whatever you see, hear, experience, everything is nothing but Brahman. And here they talked about chara and achara, moving and unmoving. Here Swami says thavara and jangama. That means everything, whatever it is, it is pervaded by that supreme consciousness. So here Swami says, by which do you I see? By which do you the he, he, ears hear? By which do you taste? Yeah, but you see here, as doctors will say, but with the ear, inner the outer ear, inner ear, the auditory canal, artery, cortex, same thing, I. But there is a principle which like triggers, it is comparable, this consciousness to electricity. So how does the lights come? Because of electricity. How does the heat come? Because of the electricity. How does the cool air come? Electricity. The same electricity, but different upadis, the outlets are different, doing different function. One gives the light, another gives the heat, Another gives the coolness. Can you say electricity is giving heat? Electricity is giving the thing. These instruments, but the one thinking principle is the electricity. Same thing, this consciousness is the one which makes the eyes see, ears hear, 
and uh, uh, Hans Taj and Life Principle work. This also I want you to refer to the Kena Upanishad. There is a Upanishad called Kena Upanishad. Kena means by which. So once this the, within the fight between the demons and um, gods, there was a big fight, and the gods won because of the grace of God. God supported. But always we all become arrogant when success comes. We become that egoist. Hey, we did that. They were celebrating. They forgot who was responsible for that. So God, whenever our ego goes up, God wants to give a lesson. So then suddenly a big light appeared in from uh, in front of them. So they were wondering, what is this? Who are you? They could not find out. So this uh, that is described in the thing called Uma Haimavati, that that mother Shakti principle appeared in the form just light. Then they realized. Who are you? And Indra, the, God, uh, the Lord of the God says, go and find out who it is. Then this first, this uh, God, the um, Agni, the fire God goes, who are you? So he says, uh, first he says, who are you? Hey, don't you know I'm the fire God? I can burn anything, even forests I can burn like that. Oh, you can do that? Then she puts a straw, a uh, straw of grass, burn that. He could not burn my car. He couldn't believe that I could burn some forest. How could not I burn? He comes ashamed and goes back. I don't know what this is. This is a power. Then he sends the wind guard. Go. What can you do? I can with my blow away even the mountains with wind. I can do the anything. Just I can blow. Okay, put, she put the same straw. Blow it. He could not. My God, he was not blessed. What to do uh, this thing? There is great power. And goes back to Indra. All these people fail one by one. You, sir, you are the master. You go and find out. We, we, we are helpers. We can. He goes and he says, "Who are? Who is the power? Hey, I am that power which made you win. I am the power which makes you see. I, Kena means by which. I am the power which makes you hear. I am the make which makes you walk. I make the power which makes you function. Because the minute that switch is off." We are all the lights without electricity. There's, it doesn't function. So this is a humbling experience to always be grateful to God. By whose power everything works. The way we are talking, I'm talking, that's because of the divine power. The way you are listening, power. Sometimes you may listen, you may not understand. So even understanding is the gift of God. So everything able to be able to, all functions we have, is only by that power, that atmic power, and we are duty is to recognize and be grateful. Sairam.